Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and today I want to talk about what the heck these things are. You've got a computer cable and it's got this crazy bulgy thing here. It kind of looks like uh, a python swallowed a trash can or something. So what the heck are these things and what do they actually do? Alrighty. So you may notice we have a, a USB cable here fairly fairly old USB cable and on both ends you've got these little trash cans on here integrated into the cable. You may have also seen this on say a VGA connector. You can see there's one on both ends of this VGA cable and also say a DVI cable. These guys are huge. So these things are what is known as a ferrite choke. Now, they look kind of like this. You can buy these and you can actually snap it over your own cable if you want. And it's got this gray stuff inside. And the gray stuff is actually ferrite. Now, ferrite is a, a very interesting material because it consists primarily of iron oxide, AKA rust, and one or more extra metals added in. And they melt it all down and blah, blah, blah. And, and you end up with ferrite. Now, ferrite is a rather interesting material because it is generally non-conductive, but it is easily magnetized. And the way these things actually work is you have your cable and your cable can actually act as an antenna. So either you have noise from, from your computer or from your gizmo, uh, maybe there's some other device in the area that's, that's radiating like radio frequency noise and that induces high frequency currents in the wires inside this cable. Okay, so how exactly does a ferrite core attenuate noise signals? When you put a ferrite core around a cable, you are essentially forming an inductor with all the signal wires that go inside the cable. Now, even though the cable may be wound around the ferrite core only once, it's still basically forming an inductor. You can wind it multiple times if you want, but you don't have to. And an inductor is basically just a coil of wire, which we usually draw like that. And we know that with inductors, when a current goes through here, this creates an expanding and collapsing magnetic field. As the frequency of your current increases, the magnetic field has to expand and collapse faster and faster. And so we say that as the frequency increases, the impedance of this inductor also increases. And remember here that our ferrite, uh, our ferrite choke is basically attenuating high frequency signals. So if we were to draw a quick little schematic of what it looks like, a, a, a circuit diagram of putting a ferrite choke on a cable, if we take two wires in that signal cable, it would look something like this. This is our sort of simplified schematic diagram. You basically have what kind of looks like a transformer here, and this is like signal, signal wire A, and this is signal wire B, right? Okay, well normally, for reasons which are kind of beyond the scope of this video, we use differential signaling. And what that means is that you have basically two, you have two signal lines here in your wire and you have uh, equal but opposite signals. So like you'd have a signal on one line like this and on the other line it would look like that, more or less. And that means you have a current flowing in this direction on wire A and on wire B the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Well that has an interesting effect because as we just said, if the current is flowing in this direction, that creates this expanding and collapsing magnetic field. But if in wire B, the current is flowing in the opposite direction, you get also a magnetic field induced in the core, in the ferrite core, but it's an opposite magnetic field. So both magne magnetic fields cancel and your, your data signal actually passes right through and you're fine. The noise that we're talking about here generally takes the form of what's called a common mode current, which means both currents in both of your signal wires are traveling in the same direction. And when that happens, the current in, in, in signal A, in the little wire for signal A, he creates his expanding and collapsing, collapsing magnetic field. But the same current going in the same direction in line B is creating, again, an identical expanding and collapsing ma magnetic field, those add together. So what actually happens with common mode currents 
is that the energy of this sort of doubled up magnetic field is dissipated in the co in your ferrite core in the choke in the material itself as heat uh, one thing to note is that these ferrite cores do not suppress low frequency noise uh, DC and lower frequencies generally pass right through of course it depends on the type of ferrite and the formulation and blah 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 but generally speaking when you buy something like this it's to reject high frequency noise so you're not going to use one to get rid of say like 50 or 60 hertz AC hum or anything like that so yeah that's pretty much it ferrite chokes are basically high frequency electromagnetic interference suppressors so now you can go tell everyone you know that you know what these things are and they'll be totally unimpressed right right for more techie tips see scottystech.info thanks for watching see you next time